Now we are ready to do some math. So let's talk about our heat equations. So when we have heat capacity, so our heat is always Q. If we have heat capacity, remember the heat capacity is joules per degree Celsius. So we only need our heat capacity times our temperature change. Delta means change and T is for temperature. If we have specific heat, remember that is in joules per gram degree Celsius. So that kind of helps us settle things up. So Q equals M C sub S times delta T. This is probably what you've seen before. Q equals M C delta T. We just say C sub S so we're a little bit uh, more particular. Or if we have a molar heat, we can say molar heat capacity. So here, Q equals N, and remember from gas laws, N equals the number of moles. And then that is times your molar heat capacity. Because that is in joules per mole degree Celsius and delta T. So instead of an M, you have an N, N for moles, molar heat capacity, delta T. This is the one we're gonna use most often. This is the one you've probably used before. And most of y'all are gonna like this because we're still gonna to have to deal with units and units are still very important, but there's basically no way to do this other than working it algebraically. So let's also remember and write up here that delta T equals final, which is where you end, minus your initial where you started. So if it helps you going through the problems, if it gives you two temperatures, note wh which one it starts and where it finishes. Because if you get these backwards, you're going to get the wrong sign on the answer. You have to indicate whether it is positive or negative and, you know, kind of what that means. So here this says, how much heat is required to warm 1,500 grams of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 100? Here is the specific heat capacity, and it also gives the density. So if it were giving us like liquid water, we would need the density to go to grams. All right, so here we can say Q equals MC sub S delta T. All right, so we have a mass. It is 1,500 grams. Our specific heat capacity is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. You don't have to worry about memorizing any specific heat capacities. They're always given to you in every problem. Go ahead and cancel out your units there as you go along. And delta T. All right. So here we need to remember final and initial. So it goes from 25, so that's T initial, to 100, so that's T final. So our temperature change is 100 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius. A lot of you probably just went ahead and did that in your head. So if you just went ahead and wrote 75 degrees Celsius, that's totally fine. Some of you, if you didn't, you can move it on down. 4.184 joules per degree Celsius here. As my units cancel, I'm just leaving them out. And 75 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now degrees Celsius will cancel out. And that leaves us with joules. Let's calculate. All right, so here we have 1500 times 4.184 times 75. So that's large. And you know, the water's gaining heat there because it's getting warmer. So let's say we get two significant figures. So 4.5 times one, two, three, four, five. 10 to the fifth joules. That's it. If you want to put it in, kil in kilojoules, you can. It doesn't say specifically, so you can say or 450 kilojoules. But I like joules, that makes it easy. Okay.
okay? Now let's try another one. Here. How much heat is absorbed by a copper penny as it warms from the temperature of the snow? The snow is negative eight degrees Celsius to the temperature of your hand, which is 37 degrees Celsius. The penny is pure copper. It has a mass of 3.1 grams and we get the specific heat. Okay. So here we have Q equals M C sub S delta T. Do we know how big the penny is? Yes, it is 3.1 grams. Do we know the specific heat of copper? Yes, 0 0.385 joules per gram degree Celsius. Cancel out the grams. Okay, here, so where does it start? The snow, so that's T sub I, T sub F. So be careful here. So this is going to be final, 37.0 minus initial, so that's negative 8. So there you got to add them together. Okay, so that's 3.10, 0 0.385. I've got joules and I've still got degrees Celsius. And that's going to be, what, 45? Yeah, 45 degrees Celsius. Okay, those cancel out. Ready to calculate. 3.1 times 0.385 times 45. So here, three significant figures, 53.7 joules. And again, heat is absorbed. It's going um, from your hand. So here, this would be the surroundings. Copper penny, this would be the system. Just practice. 